And welcome back to Newsmakers Sunday. We continue our conversation with Congressman Mike Gallagher. Uh, before the voting on the impeachment, Congressman, Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party leadership sent a letter to Vice President Mike Pence to start the process of invoking the 25th Amendment. And for those at home, the uh, process is where the majority of the cabinet can remove a president from office with the vice president along with them. Is that something you considered supporting or just as with impeachment, you would not have supported that either? No, I, I was persuaded by the vice president's arguments that that was not the best path forward. And I think, you know, particularly looking at the way P Pence conducted himself that day and that evening, I actually have full faith and, and trust that his arguments are, are genuine and, and he feels that it's not warranted right now. There was also, we had a bunch of outside experts come in and, and take a look at it. There were problems with the timing of of the 25th amendment scenario such that similar to impeachment it wouldn't actually remove uh, president trump in time and i also think the 25th amendment while there is a sort of limited constitutional role for congress it's primarily an executive branch decision um you know it's the vice president of the cabinet's decision it's not necessarily in my view an area where congress gets to come in over the top and force the vice president to invoke the 25th Amendment, I think that would have raised significant uh, separation of powers issue and, and issues and set a very bad precedent for our democracy going forward. Do you see an impeachment uh, trial in the Senate after Biden takes office, or do you think Biden is going to say, let's all back off here? Well, I think it will have to go forward, just given the special rules that govern uh, impeachment. I think, I don't know if Nancy Pelosi considered this, but I think it effectively uh, messes up Biden's first uh, 100 days and and derails uh, his agenda uh, just because of the way it will have to be conducted in the Senate. Now, if you read my op-ed explaining why I was a no vote, I mean, part of it is I, I think it's going to collapse entirely, particularly since there is this issue that uh, this open question as to whether you can convict a president while he's out of office that reasonable people disagree on, by the way. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm right on that. Um, so, you know, I think it will have the effect of uh, consuming all of our media attention for a month or two months, but not actually resolving uh, the fundamental issues. Um, so we'll see. Uh, perhaps I'm, I'm wrong about that, but I'm almost certain that there will be some form of a trial uh, in the Senate. Donald Trump still has his supporters, despite all of this. 70 million plus voters are an attest, uh, a testament to that. Um, do you see Donald Trump as being politically relevant in four years from now? Quite honestly, I don't know, but I think you hit on the, the important point, which is that you, know, you can't ignore the concerns of those 70 million people and the fact that so many people in Northeast Wisconsin voted for Donald Trump, uh, quite honestly, because I think they were disgusted with the status quo. And they liked that the president was willing to shake things up. And I think if you sort of, if you can get a past sort of the current unrest and controversy, I'm not saying we gloss over it or, or move on at all. I think we need to, we're gonna be confronting the harsh reality of January 6th for a long time. I do think there are policy achievements of the Trump administration that will live on whether or not Trump is a viable political figure going forward. So for example, as we've talked about multiple times on the show, I've worked very closely with the Trump administration on national security issues, particularly when it comes to China. And the president, um, you know, even if you think he should be impeached a second time and should never run for office again, the fact remains that he has completely changed the conversation when it comes to US foreign policy. And we actually have a positive bipartisan foundation to build off of when it comes to China. And that has a domestic component as well. I think over the next two decades, we are going to have to be in the business of bringing back a lot of the manufacturing that we've outsourced to China back to the United States or to our closest allied countries. And that's an economic concern that directly relates to those, those Trump voters, the so-called forgotten men and women in America who, quite frankly, think that the elites in both parties have sold them out uh, for decades. And I think we ignore their concerns at our own peril. I mean, you just look at the polling shows, trust in basic institutions has collapsed. I mean, Congress foremost among them with an 11% approval rating, but no offense, Tom, and I think you're the exception that proves the rule, the media too. I mean, your guys' approval rating is almost as, as low as ours. And so we're all gonna have to do a job of reaching out to disaffected Americans 
We just don't have any hope for the future. And I know there's a lot of people in my party right now that are genuinely scared about what the next four years are going to look like. And that's all the more reason we need to have a system of government that has responsible checks and balances. You never want power to be concentrated totally in a single party, let alone a single individual. And so I still have hope for America. This is the greatest country in the history of the world, but we have a lot of big problems we're going to have to fix, regardless of who wins or loses a presidential election. We continue with Congressman Mike Gallagher right after this break. Please stay with us.